Here we have our uh, third demonstration. As you can see, there's an ordinary piece of sheet metal which is attached to that same shaker that we used for the trains, except this time shaker's oriented so it will cause vertical oscillations. And uh, we'll look at this then. It's really a continuous system, which in theory has an infinite number of deg degrees of freedom. Practice, it's usually the first few modes that are the most important. So we'll start uh, shaking this first up and down at a frequency of a couple of hertz. Let's see, we're up to about uh, 1.8 now, 1.9. And as you can see, nothing all that interesting happens. The <laughs> sheet metal simply goes up and down with the same frequency, same phase, and the same amplitude as the shaker. This is a static-like response, no dynamic effects here at all. But as we increase the frequency, we're up to uh, three, four, five, eight. As we get up towards that first resonant frequency, which is at about 12.5 hertz, you see the amplitude of motion now is very large compared to the amplitude of the exciter. In fact, you can barely see this exciter moving at all. And yet the uh, uh, sheet metal is responding with a fairly large amplitude. Now also there's a characteristic mode shape for this. As you can see, it's almost like a seagull flapping its wings going up and down. There are no nodal points here. This is characteristic of the first mode of vibration. Now, when I increase the excitation above that first resonant frequency, we're up to about uh, 33 hertz now, nothing much is happening. You can barely see the exciter moving. I can feel it when I touch it, but you can't really see very much happening here or here. And this is because we're above that uh, first resonant frequency in the uh, region between the two natural frequencies. Now as I continue to increase <coughs> the frequency of excitation, we'll get up to the second natural frequency. And you can hear the vibrations now because we're in the audible range. It's about 76 or so. Uh, and as you can see, we're getting another resonance where you can barely see this uh, shaker moving at all. In fact, I really doubt you can fit that you can see the shaker move, although when I touch it, I can feel it move. And of course, it's causing this resonance uh, where the sheet metal is responding with a fairly large amplitude of, of motion. Furthermore, you see the shape, the mode shape is quite a bit different than it was in the first mode. First mode was the seagull flapping its wings. This is different. You have a nodal point over here, a point which is not moving very much. So the uh, sheet metal is basically deforming like this. It's going up and then back down. And of course, that's reversing every, every half cycle. So we get the second resonant frequency. In class, we've uh, predicted the natural frequencies and also the mode shapes, as well as the nodal points. Okay, now, if I increase the frequencies yet higher, we can probably just about get that third resonant frequency. It's more difficult to see and to excite, because at these very high frequencies, damping becomes a big issue. And I think we can see it, though, yeah. <coughs> we certainly can see it. As you can see now, we have
Okay, so uh, in summary then, this was an example of a continuous system which in theory has an infinite number of degrees of freedom, although in practice it's really the first few modes, first few frequencies which are the most important.